When the core of Reactor 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant melted down and exploded in 1986, there was an argument to be made that the basement room this corium, this radioactive lava, flowed into, was the most dangerous room in the world. The air inside sizzled with radiation rates high enough to give anyone a lethal dose in just 300 seconds. The rates in this room, which I peered into on purpose in 2024, can get just as high as the elephant's foot. On purpose. Why? To scientifically and systematically make nuclear fuel as safe as possible. In the June of 2024, I was invited to check out the facilities at the Idaho National Laboratory, or INL. Over two days, I saw everything from nuclear reactors the size of trash cans to Cherenkov radiation from submerged Cobalt-60. The room in question resides within INL's Hot Fuel Examination Facility, or HFEF, or HFEF which is easier to say for me. The purpose of this building is critical to advancing nuclear technology, specifically nuclear fuel. But today I wanna to focus on a specific amazing piece of engineering that a nuke cell like me can't help but geek out about. That's the largest hot cell in the United States. The most radioactive room in the world. The unique feature about the hot fuel examination facility comes from its legacy. We were born, I would say born, in 1975, Commission March 31st. And um, the main purpose of this hot cell was to support uh, the closed fuel cycle uh, based on the EBR2 reactor, the IFR uh, program to demonstrate the full closure of the fuel cycle. The core of nuclear technology is, of course, the nuclear stuff inside, and turning natural uranium into usable fuel is non-trivial. It has to be processed, enriched, and encircled with other materials that make the whole process of generating power safe and efficient. The purpose of the HFEF, therefore, is to study all of these aspects before and after fuel goes into a reactor. Scientists also use the facility to study what happens generally to different materials when they are irradiated. Of course, the rub here is that radioactive stuff is radioactive. And so before scientists and engineers can examine said stuff, they need a place to do so. A place that can both let them examine some of the hottest stuff in the nuclear industry and allow them to move and manipulate said stuff. Enter the hot cell. But don't enter it. Okay, I simply have to geek out about the engineering of this thing. It's not the only hot cell. Labs all around the world have hot cells, but this is one of the largest, and it's the largest in the United States. The level of protection here is cray cray. The principal gamma protectors are, of course, the concrete walls. They are 1.2 meters or 4 feet thick, which, quick math, is in the neighborhood of like a million kilograms of concrete. To prevent oxygen and moisture in the air from interfering with the delicate experiments in this concrete colossus, the main cell at HFEF has been evacuated of air and replaced with inert argon gas. It's like the atmosphere of a different planet in there. To see inside the cell, personnel peer through 1.2 meter thick compound windows. They have panes of lead-infused glass that's why there's the yellow tint to the glass, that sandwich rectangular vats of oil. It should be noted that these thick AF 3000 kilogram glass slabs are blocking 62% of the light from inside the cell. It's actually as bright as day in there. That's just how much shielding the windows are providing from photons. Oh, and notice the grain in the footage? That's the camera getting an inside sunburn from the radiation and what an amount of radiation it is. When the so-called elephant's foot was first found beneath Chernobyl Reactor 4, it was reportedly emitting something like 10,000 rentgen per hour, enough to give you a 100% lethal dose in around 300 seconds. When I was in Idaho, I was told that spots in the HFEF hot cell could reach levels just as high. It sounds scary, but thanks to the engineering of the hot cell, I was able to safely stand just a few meters from those literally dizzying doses, from rates hundreds of millions of times higher than where I'm sitting now. It's kind of crazy to think about, but that's science for you. This experiment here is in the stage of non-destructive, so you can see this big cylinder here. 
this is our collimator, we are collecting data, uh, we're collecting gamma rays from the experiment. And this is one example of one um, step, one post-radiation examination we do. Now, to be clear, the HFEF isn't just some radiation prison. Just a second, that's a cool name for a metal band. It is fully equipped with ways to move and manipulate the hot experiments in its area. Since going inside the hot cell would be lethal in more ways than one, it has two internal cranes and 15 stations where operators can use robot arms to move fuel and other experiments around in three dimensions. It's an older technology, yes, but it gets the job done. In operation since 1975, the HFEF isn't just a big hot cell. It has a fuel accident condition simulator, decontamination cell, repair area, and much more. It even has its own on-site nuclear reactor. The science of making nuclear materials as safe and as efficient as they can possibly be never stops. In fact, this year, the HFEF started testing spent fuel from next-generation light water reactors. The ultimate goal is really, can I design that like the perfect yeah. material or experiment, right? That will not have that case, or either you, you find a way to mitigate it, or you completely like change your design. And this is like the feedback loop that is the interaction that we have here, you know, on the desert where we do the actual experimental work with the modeling groups or the design uh, uh, folks, wherever they come from, you know, if they are within INL or within the industry. So it's a very collaborative um, uh, landscape for, for research. During my time at INL, I was fortunate enough to interview the director of the lab, and something he said really stuck with me. We're not making nuclear safer, he said. It's already safe. We're making nuclear better. And apparently, to make nuclear better, sometimes you need a room more radioactive than one of the most infamously radioactive places on the planet. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you again to Idaho National Laboratory for inviting me out for two days to check out all of their amazing stuff. I can't wait to go back. It was completely surreal to have actual nuclear professionals, young engineers and scientists, run out of the facilities to get a photo with yours truly. That is mind-blowing and very humbling. Thank you, INL. I can't wait to make more videos. Speaking of which, if you want to see more videos from my time at INL, let me know down in the comments. And if you want to engage with everything that we do here at the facility, nuclear and otherwise, you can join the facility if you go to the link on ARIA right now. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name in every single video. <laughs> That's it. So, <laughs> so I know some of you are going to be pedantic about today's title, The Most Radioactive Room on Earth. And let me be clear, there are more radioactive places. But you can't really manipulate things inside of them, and you can't see inside of them. The inside of a nuclear reactor, like near the fuel rods while it's running, is certainly more radioactive than the hot cell at INL, but you can't actually put experiments in there with your own hands via robot arms and see directly into it as you do so, the hot cell is more like a room than any of these other more radioactive places. So if you've got a problem with that, I don't know. Thanks for watching.